Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and today we are going to be talking about quarter car model. So quarter car model is essentially and most of the times thought of as a model where we can analyze the car suspension for the right quality purposes. That is true and how I look at it, you can all you cannot only use it for right quality analysis but also for performance analysis as well because essentially depending on the root spectrum that you have got in a particular case you can if you are transferring too much of these vibrations on your sprung mass then that's not good as far as suspension performance is concerned so suspension is obviously responsible for generating enough grip on all four wheels of your car at all times whatever may be the application but at the same time, suspension is also responsible for isolating the vibrations from the car. Now, I'm not talking about any particular application of the car, but if you have too much vibrations and your suspension is not attenuating those uh, vibrations in your car, then it's not good for performance in the sense that your engine will be vibrating too much, then you won't be able to lay down all the horsepower into your wheels and to your ground, and you won't get all the power that your engine is capable of. So that's why this quarter car analysis is very important. As you can look over here, we have learned parameter analysis, like the basic vibration method. So what we have is we have sprung mass over here. This, this particular area, this is sprung mass, sprung. And this is unsprung mass over here. So the way you look at it, what is learned parameter analysis? You know, short term or in short words how we can say is long parameter analysis we assume that for a particular object or a system where we are concerned about vibration or we are analyzing the vibration there are three important components to vibration mass stiffness and damping so for example for this pen this pen has a particular mass it has its own stiffness and it has its own damping properties even though we don't have a uh, proper dashboard attached to it right so if i'm doing some vibration on this obviously mass is there we know that it has some stiffness properties obviously and it resists uh, motion uh, against its own shape and because of its properties of its material whatever plastic there will be some sort of damping within the uh, like subatomic particles within itself so which resist or which kills the oscillation after some time so what we assume over here, if you think about our car, then we assume that the spring of our car only contributes towards the stiffness component of our vibration system. So we assume that spring is massless and doesn't have any damping properties associated with itself. The sprung mass that is the rest of the car, the chassis, the seats and everything, the rest of the components which are suspended on the suspensions have only mass. They don't have any stiffness to themselves. Chassis is 100% stiff. It doesn't bend, doesn't move, and it's perfectly stiff. It only contributes towards the mass of the vehicle and it doesn't have its own damping property. So mass is lumped into the chassis or that quarter car part of the analysis. And the damper in our front suspension, it's massless and it doesn't have any of its own stiffness. It only contributes towards the damping properties. Similarly, over here on this lower part, as you can see, this MT is essentially mass of the tire. KT is the stiffness of the tire, which is also called as the tire rate. This part CT is called as damping coefficient of the tire. So obviously tire is a tire is made of rubber, which is a viscoelastic material by itself. Tire has a vertical deflection. So we are assuming it to be as a spring, massless spring without any damping to itself. Given by KT, tire has its own mass. So that is given by MT. And because of the viscoelastic properties of the rubber, there is a hysteresis in the tire itself. So whenever it's rolling, it generates heat and all that. So there are a lot of parasitic losses in tires. And that is accounted for by CT over here. And then we have our road profile over here, which is given by ZR. So what happens over here is how we are doing our analysis. We have a ZR, which is quote unquote, the vertical deflection, which can be in either direction for simplicity. Let's consider it's going up. So you have ZR, uh, the vertical deflection on the mass of the tire is ZT and vertical deflection on the sprung mass of that model is ZS. 
Now we need to move to deriving equations. As you can see over here, you have sprung mass over here, and then you have, you multiplied the acceleration component of this vertical deflection, which essentially is a force. So mass times acceleration plus Ks, that is stiffness of the suspension that we have, that depends again to get a force value from stiffness, that is Newton per meter or pounds per inch, whatever units on you want to consider, but essentially force per unit uh, length of deflection. So right, how much force we need to have a unit length of deflection. So if you want to derive force from this, you have to multiply it by distance. So that distance would be essentially the difference between the vertical movement of sprung mass and vertical movement of the tire. Therefore, we have Zs minus Zt, whatever that magnitude is plus Cs, which is the damping coefficient, unit of damping coefficient is Newton second per meter, and therefore we multiply it by the velocity component. Again, the velocity component is defined by the difference between Zs and Zt, that is the difference between the vertical movement of the sprung mass and the tire. If you have this, it equates to zero because there is no external force acting as far as this part is concerned. For the second part, the lower part over here, what we see is, you again, the same thing applies over here. You have mass of the tire times acceleration of the vertical movement, so ZT double dot plus KT, that is tire rate or stiffness of the tire. Again, force generated uh, with that stiffness is depending on, depends on the difference between the vertical movement of the tire and the road. So it's ZT minus ZR plus damping coefficient of the tire because of its inherent properties, you, you have to multiply it by velocity component, again, which depends on the difference between the vertical deflection of the tire and the road spectrum. So for sample in this equation, I have given, uh, or I have taken it in the form of A sine omega t. So one thing you would notice over here, we have good two well, equations for vibration for lump parameter analysis, analysis for the sprung mass and unsprung mass. Important point to note over here is both these equations are in time domain. That's the biggest problem. Because what happens is whenever we are trying to analyze the maximum amplitude or the maximum amplitude at the natural frequency or damn natural frequency of our suspension setup, because we want to see, because that's where we are going to have the maximum value of acceleration or the displacement for our sprung mass. So we can only see it in terms of frequency, at what frequency we are getting that maximum amplitude. And then we can analyze it, how big it is, how can we attenuate it, and or if it's small enough for us to neglect it, depending on the application of the vehicle, of course. So that's why it's important to convert this, these two equations in terms of frequency domain. And that's where Laplace transform comes in to convert the time domain equation into frequency domain. Once we do that, all these time related equations will convert into Laplace domain with the Laplace variable S. And for our particular equation, S is generally given in terms of alpha plus I omega. So in our case, alpha will be considered as zero because that essentially alpha only is relevant when we are talking about magnitude of that particular waveform. We are not worried about magnitude of the waveform. We are wor worried about how our uh, sprung mass behaves under a particular frequency. So we only need frequency variable. So for our particular case and whatever analysis we move forward, S will be considered as I omega. So once we have done our uh, Laplace transform, we have converted these two equations completely in terms of S, the Laplace variable, and brought it in frequency domain. Then we can rearrange the terms to bring it in these forms, depending on what kind of analysis you are doing, what you are looking for. So these two forms, or any other form for that matter, doesn't matter. What we want to see is how, what is the reaction of our sprung mass with this current setup of stiffness of the spring, the damper, and also the tire stiffness and damping properties we have. Because what we want in any case, road handling or uh, comfort uh, ride. 
whatever the case may be, we want minimum possible acceleration or displacement of the sprung mass. That's why this whole analysis is very important. So I've done, uh, I've run some sample numbers on Octave and I've gotten a chart of uh, how it behaves in terms of frequency with this model. So let's jump into it. And I hope you understood all these equations. If you have questions, comments, please do leave them in the comment section below. As you can see, this is the chart of sprung mass acceleration versus frequency, which is in hertz. Uh, so this is, I usually prefer having a graph or of acceleration rather than displacement. And in this particular case, as you can see, the sprung mass acceleration, once we convert our equations in Laplace or in, or in frequency terms and we give it a frequency run uh, on that particular equation, you can see that there's a blip or a change in acceleration uh, over here, which is at about 0.6 hertz. This is because this is the damn natural frequency of our sprung mass system. And as we go further forward, towards the right you can see a small blip again this is nothing but the increased acceleration we see because of the unsprung mass uh, lumped parameter model going in its natural damped frequency which is at about 6.3 to 6.4 if i'm looking at it correctly so that's why once the unsprung mass goes in natural uh, frequency damped or undamped however you are considering it it also transfers in some amount to the sprung mass as well. I hope this graph was able to show you and explain it to you what we were trying to go through the quarter car model. Obviously, you can use different uh, parameters. You can use sprung mass displacement uh, with respect to sp uh, unsprung mass displacement. There are all sorts of parameters that you can analyze, but I just wanted to give you guys a glimpse of what is actually needed and how things work. So I hope you guys understood the concept and if you have any questions, comments or concerns, please leave them in the comment section below. And thank you so much guys for watching the video. I'll see you all next time.